Okay, so the next question that we have on the menu today is asking us this. Uh, we have a little diagram here. Um, it's kind of tough to zoom in, but basically the question asking us, um, we have two charges that are positive, um, Q1 and Q2, I'm going to assume that means Q1, that are fixed to a circle. At the center of a circle, they produce a net electric field that makes an angle 38 36.8 degrees with the vertical axis measured counterclockwise okay so um, let's actually write this out because that is definitely going to be important so here is going to be our electric field and the angle with the vertical is 36.8 degrees counterclockwise from the vertical yeah, looks reasonable cool so um oops 360.8 let's make that point a little bit more obvious um determine the ratio of q1 of q2 divided by q1 um but we don't want no units just the ratio between them okay so we know that um does it say anything about the radius see if we can maybe zoom into this photo here and maybe take a closer look oops did i just kill my software what happened okay that certainly isn't great hold up with these technical difficulties I'll okay I guess I'll just rewrite okay somehow some way my uh, text got quite disturbed but I'm just trying to look at this diagram um, I guess they don't give us a radius but if they don't give us a radius then we probably don't even need it okay so um, we know that this is our E field, which is 36.8 degrees from the vertical, like this. Okay, so to find the electric field, um, we know that we have two um, sources like this, okay? And from the, our diagram, we can see that here we got Q1 which is 30 degrees and Q2 60 degrees and the distance because they're both on the circle is going to be R okay and this is our center let's call our center C okay so uh, we can call that EC so, um, given this, we can, let's make our equation for EC, and um, given our, once we make an equation for EC, and we find our cont contributions from Q1 as well as from Q2, uh, that way we can do some quick math and solve for our equations, okay? So we know that EC is going to be the, the vector sum of the electric field as a result of q1 plus the electric field as a result of q2 okay so let's break this down into um into um horizontal and vertical components like if we have our x-axis like this and our y-axis like this i'm tripping that is definitely not how it should look um <laughs> the complete opposite way around y-axis and the x-axis Okay, so let's break these down into their um, subcomponents. We know that we are going to have um, EC, and the X component is going to be um, let's just worry about the the X for now. Plus E Q two X. Okay, so let's find their contributions. So um, we know that our general equation is going to be kq over r squared. 
this is going to be our general E field equation, right? So we know that um, for Q1, it's horizontally, it's just going to be the sine 30, right? You can see because um, like this would be the E Q1. Uh, we only want the x component. Okay, and you see, since this is 30, um, we could do sine 30. We could also do cos 60. Uh, let's do cos 60 uh, or, or sine 30. That might be... Um, I mean, they, they are the same thing. It's just sine 30 or 30 is on the diagram already. So let's just use sine 30. So it's uh, it won't get confused with the 60 associated with Q2. So we have K Q1 over R squared times sine 30. Plus... Um, Okay, so Q1 is going to be pushing us towards the right, which is a positive x direction. Now, Q2 is going to be pushing us towards the left. Its electric field line is going like this. EQ2. Six feet degrees. So since EQ2 is going in the negative x direction, we need to have our negative term right here. So this is going to be KQ2 over R squared. And in this case, we are going to be doing um, sine 60. Right? And you can see from here, like we're, we're given the hypotenuse um, to get this part. Given this angle, it's a uh, sine 60. Okay, so um, this will be what we need here. And um, really what's of interest is ECX. We can factor out the K and the R2 because since they're sitting on the same parts of a, or they're both sitting on a, a circle, we know that those are always going to be constant. And the only thing that we're going to be able to change is like Q1 and Q2. And we want to have uh, stuff. We want to have, you know, we're trying to find the ratio between them to make this all work out. So sine 30 minus Q2 sine 60. Okay, cool. So, um, this will be our ECX. Now we want to find our ECY. Now this is largely going to be under the same procedure. So Q1Y plus EQ2Y. And they're both going to be upwards. So that means um, they're both going in the positive Y direction, which is going upwards, which is nice and convenient for us. So the first one is going to be KQ, Q1 over R squared. And this is associated with Q1, which is on the left. And for Q1, um, well, for the previous, we used sine. So for the hor this one, we have to use cos for both of them because instead of taking the horizontal component, we're not taking the vertical. So uh, this shall be cos 30 plus k q2 over r squared. And this will be cos 60. Now, it can be, as you get more practice, it might be easier to just, like, immediately know, like, if you're doing sine on the first one, do cos on the other one. But um, if we think about it as well, for their vertical, um, you know, with a 60-degree angle on the top for Q2, we know that it has to be cos, because we know the hypotenuse, and we're looking for the adjacent with respect to the angle. Um, same, same with here. We know the hypotenuse, and we're looking for the adjacent with respect to the given 30-degree angle, which is with respect to the vertical. Okay, so we have this, and... Um, to make this a little bit easier to deal with, ECY, we can factor out K and R2, I mean R squared, because they are common to both of them. So um, it's going to follow the similar format to previously. So we have Q1, whoops, not sine, cos 30, plus Q2, 
cos 60. Keep in mind, in the the x one, we have um, um, minus, and in the y one, we have plus. Okay, so um, just uh, keep that in mind, and that is just with the direction that they're pushing. And we know that the um, angle of of ECY of EC, my bad, of the electric field as observed from the center of the circle, we know that this is going to be the tan of um, ECY over um, ECX. Right? Okay, so um, we have our angle. We know our angle is going to be 36.8 degrees. So if we do uh, inverse tan on both sides, we can see that we have ECY over ECX tan inverse of um, 36.8 degrees. And let's actually write out um, our ECY and ECX in full. So ECY we have K over R squared of Q1 cos 30 plus Q2 cos 60 all over K R2 similar pattern uh, K Q1 sine 30 minus don't forget that minus Q2 um, sine 60. Okay, so let's, um, you see here that we have a k over r squared on both the upstairs and the downstairs. They neutralize each other into 1. And um, let's get, let's ask our calculator what that ratio is going to be. So we have a numerical answer. We have inverse tan. 36.8 degrees. This is going to be 88.44 is equal to um, Q1 cos 30 plus Q2 cos 60. Q1 sine 30 minus q2 sine 60. okay so this is what we're left with now we just have need to do some further algebra to um you know simplify this and to get our our stuff so let's multiply both sides by um by the denominator here so we have 88.44 Multiplied by, is there an easy way to go about that? Aha. Uh -huh. Equals Q1 cos 30 plus Q2 cos 60. Okay, now we should need to expand the left side. So we have 88.44 sine 30 Q1 minus 88.44 sine 60 Q2 is equal to, um, well, it's uh, going to be the same as what it was on the le on the right side so q1 cos 30 plus q2 cos 60 and now we want to bring all of our q1 terms to one side and bring all of our q2 terms to the other side so 
let's just um, do a switcheroo with um, like this. So we'll have 88.44 sine 30 Q1 minus cos 30 Q1, which is equal to uh, Q2 cos 60 plus 88.44 sine 60 Q2. Okay, now on both sides, we'll factor out Q1 and we'll factor out Q2. So uh, let's do this quicker. Come so. Like so. And we shall Q1 will get factored out like this. And Q2 will get factored out like this. Okay, now the question was asking us Q2 divided by Q1. Um, so we will have divide both sides by Q1 and divide both sides by, I mean, the numerical part of the right side. So we'll have um, Q2 over Q1 is equal to 88.44 sine 30 minus cos 30 all divided by cos 60 plus 88.44 sine 60. Okay, so this would be a um, more precise numerical answer for um, the ratio between Q1 and Q2. Um, as long as the ratio between them is uh, the numerical calculation of this, um, everything should be uh, all in order so that the electric field as observed from the center of the circle is going to be, uh, is going to have an angle of 38, uh, I mean 36.8 degrees counterclockwise from the vertical. Okay, now... Um, yeah, uh, they pretty much have the same calculation here. Um, it's just they haven't gone through with the calculation. Let's actually find the numerical result of this. ASAP fast should not be too difficult. So let's pull out our calculators and type this all in. So we'll have 88.44 times sine 30 minus cos 30. all divided by cos 60 plus 88.44 times sine 60. And our numerical results for this is going to be 0 0.56 2. Okay. So another way that we can write this is Q2 is equal to 0 0.562 Q1. Meaning that Q1 has to be, um, Q1 is going to be about double or slightly more than double of um, Q2. Cool. So that uh, concludes this question. Um, so yeah, the above solution is good. However, formatting is a little wonky and it would good to, whoops.
be good to show um, the actual calculation for this particular example. Awesome.